Today we're going to be checking out the Shadowcast 2. This is a capture device that's similar to like a cam link, like the Elgato cam link, but it's a little different and it uses a little different apps. We're going to be able to use this on both an iPad and a computer. I'm going to test it out on both of those and see with some good use cases for it. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out the Shadowcast 2. And like I said, this is a capture device. Let's look at some of the uh, specifications here on the box. So on the back here, it shows clearly what you do. You plug in an HDMI source, so it's showing like a PlayStation 5, or a camera, or a Switch. You plug that in via HDMI, and then you've got a USB-C cable going to your computer or your tablet. I'm going to be testing out on both of those. And then from that, you can record it, or you can stream it, you can play it. So you can use your iPad as a remote monitor or as a portable monitor. You can even use your laptop as a portable monitor for maybe your Switch or something. And you can also use this to stream to all your favorite platforms. So if we look at the specs here, it says we got a up to 4K 60 Hertz input. So you can take basically any of your modern generation consoles and use that as an input. And then it's going to output or be able to capture up to 1440p 30 or 1080p 60. So not bad for a little portable device like this. If we look around here, it shows again some of the features. Full-size HDMI, so you don't need an adapter or something. You're just going to plug this right into something. It's USB-C 3.2. It's supposed to have a low latency. That's going to be important if you're going to be using something as a portable monitor solution. You want to be able to make sure you can actually play on it. It says console ready. You can use that as a cam link and up to QHD capture. So I think the next thing we need to do is actually open this thing up and check it out and start plugging it into stuff. All right, so inside the box is the Shadowcast 2 and then a nice braided cable. And the package on this says 1.2 meters. The only other thing in the package here was the user manual and it shows that the user manual says that we've got a 0.5 meter cable. So I don't know if they upgraded it along the way sometime, but this is really nice, it's braided. You got a right angle for one end, that's always nice. So we're going to take a look at these instructions, but this is a lot smaller than I was expecting. If we go ahead and put this up against the cam link, you can see I was expecting this to be, you know, about the same size, even though the box did clearly show on here actual size, and I didn't pay attention to that. But yeah, that is, that is small, almost too small. <laughs> you could lose that pretty easily, but hopefully you don't. And uh, I, I think by keeping the cable plugged into one end at all times, you won't lose it. But if you look at these, they're the exact opposite orientation. This is a USB that you plug into a computer, and it gives you an input for an HDMI. And this is an HDMI that you're going to plug into an output, and it gives you a USB to go into your device. So again, similar capabilities, but a little different way of doing it. And I'll be honest, I've got enough uh, capture cards and stuff like that. I was really looking at this as being... A easy portable way to use my iPad Pro as a portable monitor and that's what the first thing we're going to test out so it's got an app for both the computer and it's got an app for the iPad to use it in that fashion and that's the first thing we're going to test out so let me go ahead and grab my iPad and grab something to plug into it and we'll go ahead and test it out all right so let me show you what I've got here for my setup I've got a Nintendo switch over here and I've plugged the uh, Shadowcast 2 into the back of there and nice enough the uh, the small size of it fits right back in there without any problems without needing any kind of adapter or something so it's plugged right in there I got the USB-C cable that came with it plugged right up into here so this is a 11 inch iPad Pro so it's got the USB-C input so basically any iPad that has the USB-C input will work I guess the newest iPad I think the version 10 or something like that the regular iPad not the Pro and not the Air has USB-C, but it says it only has a USB 2 input, so that may cause a problem with some of the capturing if you need to do that. So, uh, but, but luckily the app that comes with it has lots of instructions and explains everything very well. We'll get into that just in a second. And then powering up my uh, switch here, just for convenience, I've got this anchor over here, which is just acting as a portable battery bank, so I don't have to plug this dock into the wall. So I've got that powering up the switch dock. Now, in addition to that, on the side of the switch dock here, I do have a little adapter that's called the Magic S Pro. That's this guy. I've got lots of reviews on this on the channel. I'll link those. And that's allowing me to use 
this controller here instead of using the Joy-Cons or any other kind of Nintendo controller. So just for convenience, I had this controller sitting here already, so I'm going to use that for this demo. You could do that also with that same adapter for Xbox controllers, PS4 controllers, pretty much any kind of controller. So that's what it is. So all that's running into this Genki Studio, which is the app that is made by uh, Genki, which is the company that makes the Shadowcast 2. And it's compatible with more than just the Shadowcast 2. It's compatible with other UVC adapters. Uh, the Cam Link may even work with it, but there are some limitations if you don't use the same Shadowcast 2 that Genki has made for you. But let's go ahead and go into the app here. And I've got the Nintendo Switch here running some GTA 3. So you can see I've got control here over, I guess I need to do this you know, the car, and I was, I've was i been playing for a little bit. I'm not noticing very much lag at all, so it's, it's completely playable, and like I said, all I'm doing basically right now is just using this iPad Pro as a remote monitor or a portable monitor for my Nintendo Switch, and basically any device that is HDMI output could do the same way. Now, if we tap on the screen, they call this preview mode. If we tap on the screen, then it brings up all the controls, you got a record button right there in the middle so you can start recording your stream or recording, capturing the video that you're doing. So you could use this as a portable uh, capture platform for any of your computer games or video games that you want to capture and put onto YouTube. I've got some options here for the resolution. This is where you can set your resolution all the way up to QHD. And here's the frame rates right next to it. Depending on the resolution that you pick, you can pick different frame rates. I can go ahead and use this button here to cast this right to any kind of air cast device in your house. So you could have all this running and you could be casting this to an Apple TV for a big screen TV also. That's going to add a tiny bit of latency from, you know, the whole setup, but that's kind of neat. Depending on what you're doing, you know, maybe you're not gaming, maybe you're using this for a slideshow or something, that'd be a, a good option also. We've got the settings uh, control down here, which brings up all the settings including this help page here, which when you first launch the app, it gives you this, and it gives you all kinds of information about all the different features in the app and how to set everything up. And I was really impressed by these instructions. Uh, it lets you know right away what the compatible iPads are and what the compatible products are. So that was very helpful. And then in addition to that, we've got this little guy right here, which is like an overlay thing where you can take and bring and you can see I've already been playing with it and you can start writing right on top of the screen so if you're streaming you know some kind of a tutorial onto YouTube or whatever you're streaming to you can go ahead and use this as a little overlay and then you can get rid of it just by tapping on that icon again and then once you've got everything set up you want the way you want to just tap anywhere on the screen again to get rid of that preview mode and then it's back on there now from this preview mode you can swipe your finger around to increase your your volume. And then I think the screen brightness also, you have some control over that. So overall, it was very easy to set up. Just HDMI out from this guy here, right into here. Load up the app, and it recognized the device right away. And I was playing the game in no time. So for me, like I said, this is the probably the number one use case that I have for this is being able to take any kind of HDMI device and get it right to this iPad. That's something that I've been waiting for forever, like for the entire length of the existence of iPads. And it's only been recently that Apple has allowed UVC video to come into an iPad. And so far, it's been working great. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply get out of this app and I'm going to go into the Elgato app. Elgato has an app called Capture and it works with their capture devices. And I'm going to see if it happens to work with this device. I think the Ginky Studio app will work with the Elgato device. It says it does put a watermark on there that says Ginky if you're not using their Shadowcast 2. But I want to see if the Elgato app will recognize the Shadowcast. So give me a second to set that up. All right, that was quick. I went ahead and set it up, and it says right away, no, this is not, I don't see a supported device. It gives you a list of the one, two, three, four, five different supported devices. So, oh well, if, if you're using the Elgato app, you got to use an Elgato product. But I'll tell you from first-hand experience, 
that Genki Studio app has a lot more features in it than this app does. All right, so what I set up for my second use case here is basically a laptop, and I want to do the same exact thing. I want to use the laptop screen to put whatever my console is. So in this case, this Nintendo Switch. So maybe you're traveling and you got the Switch with you and you got your laptop with you, but you are uh, you want to go ahead and you know play some two-player games or something on the couch, and you just want to plug it right into something that you already got with you. So for Windows and Mac, they have a app that's called Genki Arcade. So this would be the equivalent of what we just looked at on the iPad. And they've got some download links here. I tried that, and it sends you to a, a Dropbox link for a zip file. And before I even went to install that, I saw that there is this browser option down here. So I clicked on that, and it basically opened up another tab here that was called Genki Arcade. And it started off with these settings over here on the left-hand side. And as soon as I plugged in my USB-C cable, and that's, again, coming straight from the Genki HDMI cord that's inside here right now in the switch, then it just came right up on the screen. So this is just in a browser, and you can click full screen to bring it full screen. And I still got the same setup where I've got the uh, Xbox or PlayStation controller talking to the switch. And I've got the uh, big screen happening right here and it, it just works. And I've been playing for a little bit here and the uh, the lag isn't horrible. It's definitely playable. I'm not seeing any difference between this and what I just did on the iPad and this is going right in the app. So I think that's uh, maybe the way I'd do it instead of loading in some kind of software or something. Now, if you were gonna be doing this and streaming, then you would have this opened up in OBS and it would just see that Shadowcast 2 as an input and you would just put that in as one of your input sources for video just like any other type of capture device so that would work just fine but if you just want to play you don't need to record or anything you just want to play and use this monitor as a monitor then this would be the way to go so if you're like me and you're just looking for a tiny little device to help you bring HDMI into a laptop or into a iPad then I would say this thing is great I'll leave a link to it down in the description below you can grab it on Amazon I got it on sale but it was a lot cheaper than the cam link and it was a lot cheaper than most other devices like this. Now, if you want something that you can actually stream and record and maybe play at the same time, you know, you want to have a HDMI pass through, which this doesn't have. If that's your intent of actually, you know, recording, capturing video that you're playing and you want a more traditional type device, they also make this Shadowcast 2 Pro. So this is going to be a similar device. It's going to be a capture device, but it has HDMI pass-through. It also has 4K support for capture. So this one might be something you want to look at if you want to do a full capture and stream and still have it on your monitor. Then check this out. I'm going to be doing a full review on this. So go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss that. But I'll leave a link to this down below also. Now this device is something I bought myself. It's not something that they sent me. It's not something that I was paid to review. This is out of my pocket, and it's a device that I was looking for to do this exact type of thing. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with it. It just works. So if you have any other questions about it, go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. If you want to go check one of these out, like I said, there'll be a link in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. If you pick it up on Amazon, it does help the channel, and I thank you for that also. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, then I appreciate a thumbs up. Go ahead and check out the rest of the channel. I've got other reviews on different types of stuff like this and all kinds of geeky stuff. But that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.